Today in the news, we got all about the RX 5600 XT and Intel has reached thermal velocity. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. What a shocker, right? All right, so it looks like we finally know the specs to the RX 5600 XT, and honestly, I'm kind of surprised. ASRock accidentally posted the specs for their RX 5600 XT Challenger on their website, and a Reddit user caught it before it was taken down. Now, the Reddit user in question deleted his account quite quickly, so take it with a tiny bit of salt, but it's not the first time that ASRock accidentally puts a card online before it's supposed to. Let's get into the specs. The RX 5600 XT will have 36 compute units or 2304 stream processors. Yep, that's the exact same amount as the RX 5700 non-XT. So this basically confirms that this card is based on Navi 10. So where did they cut back to not make it cannibalize its own lineup? Well, a few areas. First, of course, is the memory. Not only does it have 6 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 8, although an 8 gigabyte version has been spotted, but the speed of the memory is different. Instead of the 14 gigahertz effective memory clock that the RX 5700 series run at, this card will run at 12 gigahertz. The memory bus is also lowered to 192 bit from 256, effectively dropping the bandwidth to 288 gigabytes per second from 448. The second way this card is cut back might be in its clock speeds. And I'm saying might because two different cards popped up. First, the ASRock Challenger has a base clock of 1235 megahertz, a boost of 1620 megahertz, and a game clock of 1460. The base and game clocks are around 200 megahertz slower and the boost about 100 compared to the RX 5700. On the other hand, Komachi and Saka found a gigabyte RX 5600 XT gaming OC and the clocks are much higher. So I just had to cut out a small chunk of this news since Komachi on Twitter said that the clocks leaked here are probably wrong. The ASRock one should be correct though. Personally, I would not be surprised if board partners still pushed these cards that far anyways. All right, back to the video. Anyways, we were way off in terms of specs. Most of the speculations pointed towards a 28 to 32 CU card. So to see AMD basically take a 36 CU RX 5700 and just nerf the bus and the memory is kind of surprising. My last video was about how this card was too little too late, but I gotta take it back. This card could be perfect for tinkerers. If Igor's lab adds it to the more power, soft power play table mod, and I don't see why they wouldn't, this card would easily reach RX 5700 levels of performance, making it a great bang, and I can't say for the buck just yet because we still don't know what the price will be. At least from this ASRock page, we can tell that AMD did not limit the card to 8 lanes of PCIe like they did with the RX 5500 series. So PCIe Gen 3 performance should be the same as Gen 4. Click up here to see what kind of effects this could have on performance. So what do you guys think of uh, this card? At $250 to $280, this could be a good buy for people who don't want to touch used hardware. Moving on to some Intel news, their complete lineup for Comet Lake S has been allegedly leaked, and as expected, it doesn't look like much of an upgrade. If we look at the 8-core 10700K, which seems to replace the 9900K, it has pretty much identical specs. The cache is the same at 16 megabytes, the all-core boost is the same at 4.7 gigahertz, the turbo boost 2.0 is the same at 5 gigahertz, and the only difference is the base clock, which has been bumped from uh, 3.6 to 3.8, and the Turbo Boost Max 3.0, which goes from 5 GHz to 5.1. The TDP has also been significantly increased. All in all, the only new things here is the 10 core 10900K that we already knew about, and the fact that all the CPUs will have hyper threading. Also, they added yet another boost feature called Intel Thermal Velocity Boost, and it's only available for the 10900K. So that CPU will have Turbo Boost 1, 2, Turbo Boost Max 3.0 and this thermal velocity thing. I'm guessing that those speeds for the thermal velocity thing will only be achievable if you have the thermal headroom. That would be 5.3 on a single core or 4.9 on all cores. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, you can put them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. It's really cold in here. Oh yeah, dudes, uh, I'm gonna make a, um
New Year's resolution type video, I think. Bye.